Welcome to another episode of the Cybersecurity Incident Response Playbook. In this video series, I've been breaking down the playbook, which is published by the Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency. And in this eight part series, we've covered each of the phases in the playbook. And in this last video, we are going to take a look at Forensic Toolkit and how it can apply to the CISA playbook within your agency. The FTK suite is uniquely positioned to integrate into this playbook and allow you to fulfill a lot of the requirements and needs of this playbook with one solution. It's not going to solve all of the aspects of the playbook, but I don't think any tool does. So we're going to talk about how FTK integrates in, how it works with other tools within the system, and then we'll close up this series with how you can contact to get more information about Forensic Toolkit and the CISA playbook. So let's start with the playbook here, we have it. And what we'll do is we'll shade out and highlight different areas and talk about the aspects of FTK that will work with these different areas of the playbook. So first off, before the incident happens, we have instrumentation like SOAR and SEAM solutions. And then once they detect something and an incident starts to occur, we're going to declare an incident and determine the investigation. Go. First off, FTK is not a perimeter defense tool. So you're going to need that. You probably already have it, let's hope, within your infrastructure. FTK, however, integrates very well out of the box with Splunk and Palo Alto and can receive reports from those two solutions and based on those reports, go on to perform certain tasks within your network to start the incident response. What these integrations do is save you valuable time when an incident occurs. Incidents may not always happen from nine to five when you have your full staff there, as it may occur at all times of the day. And this way, the process of beginning to react to the incident happens automatically without any human interaction there at first. Yes, people will come in and begin to work stuff, but at least we get started automatically quicker. Now, what are some of those reactions based on the report that we want to start doing? Well, we want to start to collect and preserve the data. And that's what FTK does really, really well. Using the FTK agent, we can collect information from endpoints, whether they're on or off the network, and you can choose what type of information to collect based on the report from your Sora Seam solution. And that can be pre-programmed so that it reacts accordingly automatically. The FTK agent can collect from Linux machines, Mac machines, and of course, Windows machines on or off your network. And the really cool thing about it being automated and tied to your Soren Seam solution is this happens very quickly, right at the beginning. So you're getting that right as the vectors are being detected. So you hopefully getting the most fresh and relevant data collected and preserved into a forensic format. And this is what we want so that we can be the most effective in our remediation later. Of course, performing analysis is part of FTK. We can use YAR rules, hash sets, keyword searching, of course, manual searching to find that data, figure out what has gone wrong, what has been attacked, those types of things. And most of the time you should be in a zero trust environment. So you have your options of different interfaces as well with FTK. If you are in the IT and security department, of course you may have a thick client installed on a box that can run and do all this stuff. But maybe some of your analysts are out in different departments. You need to bring in people from different areas to review data. FTK has a web-based interface that doesn't require any elevated Windows permissions or install and that way you can stay zero trust compliant while expanding the pool of your available and effective reviewers next what we want to do once we have kind of gone through analyzed, figure out what we're dealing with is we need to remediate we need to contain and get rid of the stuff that's it within our network that shouldn't be of course ftk allows you to do full remediation you can delete files stop services you can close ports this is very beneficial 
as you can close all the ports except that which FTK uses to communicate with that box. So that would prevent them from any access to any other resources within the network, allowing you to continue to collect or remediate without the threat of it spreading to other areas of your network. When we talked about the contain activity phase within the playbook, we talked about not tipping off to the attacker that you're doing something. By immediately shutting down the ports, you lock them out of that resource and prevent them from jumping from that resource to something else, or at least mitigate the risk. FDK's remote agent allows you to preview boxes, so as you remediate, you can then get a refreshed view of the system to make sure that nothing new or that the attack hasn't sprung back up within that system. So you can kind of go through this cycle to make sure that the system is secure. If necessary, or if part of your policy, the contain may be just to shut down the endpoint. You can do this using FTK's remote agent, of course, and that way we contain it and prevent the spread that way. Once we've kind of isolated all the stuff, contained it, eradicated, we need to adjust our tools to make sure that we are now prepared for that attack and can also do a proper scan of our network with the things that we've learned up to this point. So we're gonna update FTK with new YAR rules, hash sets, any search criteria and those types of things to compensate for this type of attack. FTK makes it really easy to import new YAR rules. So as you build some based on what you've detected with new signs of compromise, you can get those back into your tool really quick. You also wanna make sure that you're updating FTK's automation and integration with your SOAR and SIEM implementations. We have a very simple graphical user interface that allows you to do this very quickly. And once you've adjusted all your tools and you're, you're back to new normal using all the other things that we've talked about in this playbook, you're ready for the next attack that hopefully never comes, but we all know it will. And then we run through this cycle. FTK is a very important piece of any CISA playbook implementation because of its robust features in collecting, preserving, analyze, and its flexibility and automation to integrate with other tools. FTK's API called FTK Connect comes out of the box ready to integrate with certain SOAR and SIEM solutions like Splunk or Palo Alto. But honestly, if you have someone in-house that can code, FTK Connect can integrate with any system that you can code an API for. We give you that flexibility. So your ability to react and implement FTK within your network is almost limitless. All right. Well, that actually concludes our series for the CISA playbook in FTK and a kind of an overview and why you should have the CISA playbook implemented within your agency. Of course it is required, but hopefully this will give you a better understanding of the different phases and how a tool like FTK can fit within that framework. Here's a couple of resources again that this information has been pulled from. Of course, the cybersecurity incident and Vulnerability Response Playbook by CISA, and then a couple different articles from NIST that you can review to get the most information about how to properly protect your agency's network within the guidelines that CISA wants you to play by. If you wanna get more information about how to implement FTK into your CISA Playbook response, then go ahead and reach out to Courtney Yu and you can see the email there, and she would be happy to get you set up. Again, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because we will have more series like this coming up. And of course, we have a lot of good information about FTK and forensics posting every week. And don't forget our podcast, FTK Over the Air, where we interview different people from the forensic industry and talk about different stuff related to forensics in general, um, including tools, workflows, mental health, that sort of thing. So go ahead and check those out. Again, thanks for watching.